Let's see. No Shadow Demon ban. As you... Oh, there's a game going. I was just waiting for it to show up. <laughs> uh, okay, I had to refresh the page. Perfect. Uh, the, the stream, yeah? Yeah, right, I was just going to watch the, the in-game draft. I think it's the same time, right? Oh, yeah, you're following the in-game draft. Okay, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I watched the in-game draft on the stream and then... Uh... Same thing, same thing. Uh, I'm fine either way. I'll just pull I it. mean, do whatever you want. It's been working out. It's synced. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what's... I'm curious to see what's going on in the actual, like, stadium and stuff. To see the players. Kind of feels more like TI when you watch the drafting booths. Yeah. I was just being lazy, to be honest. I don't have an excuse. <laughs> Did you read the Booth's uh, blog post from Valve? Uh, I did not read that, no. I saw it, but I did uh, not read it. Yeah. Did you find it interesting? Yeah, it's a little bit interesting. They just said that they, they built this expensive booth, quite expensive indeed. Not that they're lacking for money, but anyway, that's what they said. And uh, that they tried to transport it to Europe, but that it broke in transit. That, that's Yikes. <laughs> yeah, so they stopped like transporting it around the world and they just kept it in US for US events and when there's an event somewhere else they they use some other methods. And there's pros and cons for booths. That's pretty much the extent of uh what they said. What were the main cons? I think um I don't remember. <laughs> Do you remember chat? Help them out, guys. Uh cost is a con? Uh maybe ventilation sometimes? Like I feel air, like airflow? not every eSport has booths. Now that I know. About it. Most of them don't. Yeah. I've played a lot in booths, and air was always a problem. Like, in case people think that's easily solved or whatever, it wasn't. Like, I often had to request for, like, the little mini air conditioning unit inside, and sometimes they had it, sometimes they don't. It could get really hot. It was could the get size stuffy. of your booth comparable to these, or was it no. much smaller? Single-player booth, right? So you can barely yeah. uh, stretch your arms. Oh, wow. Yeah. A space is often an issue. I think Valve touched upon that, and it's true. Uh, sometimes they had rickety table inside because they don't go for like the hundred thousand dollar construction. So mm -hmm. got a shitty picnic table inside, or not enough space, so I couldn't put my monitor far back enough because I'm not. Irony kinda, that kinda they pay that much for a booth and then have a shitty table. No, I, I don't know how much they paid for it. I'm just saying they probably went for a cheaper option sometimes. Yeah, I was, you were just saying that the con of the booth was that it was expensive. So I assume, like, even if it's not 100k, it's like at least they're paying a lot of money for a booth, and then it's like yeah, it could still be bad. Know. Yeah. Muerta is flexible in position where it's gonna go. Yeah, I think that's the benefit of the hero. I mean, I, it's funny because I saw a lot of Muerta in my games, and she's actually like the second most picked hero in pro level pubs. She's like makes sense. Maybe even the. Maybe even the first most picked. I love She's her like as every game four though. and as one. Yeah, I haven't played her as support yet, but um, as one, she's very unique. I mean, she's a cool hero. Yeah. Feels a lot better than Dro, that's for sure. Yeah, a ranged hero that can stand its ground is more important in this patch, for sure. Free Ghost Dro, Scepter? I think. Yeah, true. Yeah, the map's just too open, I think. Yep. I think Drow just has always been, since the map expanded, a really tough hero to make work. Though I like Shard for Drow, but yeah, when do you get it? Yeah, the... It's so mean, positional. Suns fans casting, I like the Shard. <laughs> he always goes nuts for it. I, I don't think I've actually <laughs> built the new Shard. Uh, On purpose. I know what it, I know what it does, but I, I, I've never built it, so... Oh. I think I've only played Drow like once or twice since they reworked her Shard. Oh. And eggs. It's more it's a support. We know this now. Wow, they revealed it that early. That's crazy. Why so early? Maybe afraid of ban. Because usually carries are like in the last line of bans. Yeah. Um, That's insane. They haven't seen either of the Spectre's offlane matchups. Like yeah. Blind picking it in lane as well. I, would, I mean, I'm going to be studying this to see like... I, Spectre feels like a weird laner now. I, I know you said you've been struggling with her in lane, but I've not been beating Spectres. Like, really? Uh, like, good Spectre players, I'm not losing to them, but I'm not beating them. So I'm not good? Uh, yeah, I wasn't trying to call you out there. I'm <laughs> saying, like, in the past, it's like if Spectre's in the enemy safe lane, I'm like, oh, free farm for me, yeah. you know, as, as the off laner. I haven't felt that, really. Um, 
as much. So but I'm she didn't change like, from until level five. I don't know. That's what I mean. Like I don't know. I don't. I, I don't understand. I actually Maybe don't understand. Maybe you don't know how to play against Spectre. Maybe I'm just. That's what I'm saying. You know, I'm saying <laughs> I want to see what they pick. I'm like, what am I missing here? You know, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, I, I didn't want to admit that I just don't know. But I, you know, I, I don't. So okay, look, it's one tied. of two things. Either you suck or I suck. This is my ego's message to us. So. Yes. Yes. Okay, well, at least I get to learn if I suck. So we got, yep. we got Tide Hunter as their response. I will say Tide pretty much free farms against any hero without like a damage passive, like yeah, Ursa, exactly, Slark, Slark. Ursa, yeah. Monkey. Uh, you play Tide? Uh, I, I mean, I haven't played him much recently, but I mean, I, I he's really I, complex, I've... so you probably don't know how to play him anymore. Yeah, he's pretty tough. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Tide's like one of those heroes that like he's not super exciting, but no, uh, he's not. He, I, I, if I could choose something else, I would as an offlane player. But I also <laughs> like since I play maybe offlane like third of my games. If I had to guess, I try to stick to like a small hero pool since I'm learning new hero. Like I've never played Kunkka before this patch. Oh yeah. So like I'm I'm really enjoying Kunkka, but um, yeah. yeah, I mean he's he's super fun. Maybe. There's just more fun heroes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kunkka's a lot more fun. Oh, wait, what? Okay, so it's offlane Wraith King. Offlane Wraith King, a uh, tiny little chance that Dark Willow is a one, but let's say, <laughs> let's say that's not the case, no. it's a four. Yeah. They've got, that's so interesting <coughs> that they picked Invoker because they see the offlane and the carry, but, but they the don't mid. see the enemy mid and they yeah. picked Invoker. So they're yeah. giving a free potential mid counter? Because yeah, they, they want nothing left, or? they want to flex their carry based on the enemy mid. That seems like a weird, more like it's not the countering. It's they have a big reveal. Okay, I'm gonna say this much right now. This is a sick life stealer game for for uh, spirit. For for spirit, I want to see it for this real. Is as good as it gets. Why? Uh, it owns Wraith King in lane. Uh, okay. And then Spectre is really bad against Life Stealer as well. Really, uh, why? It's uh, you can't really burst Life Stealer. Uh, he can infest the guy you try to burst, and then he has open wounds. He has a consistent slow. Uh, uh, his so open you can wounds win counters the one -on -one. Blade Mill. Yeah, his rage counters Blade Mill. Uh, uh, it's actually it's not just my opinion. It is on Dota buff Spectre's second worst matchup. Really? Is, wow. is, is, it's Viper. Life stealing. Interesting. So, yeah, I'm, I want to see it. I, I know Yatro plays it sometimes. And so. Life Stealer doesn't get punished as much by the enemy's insane flash farming because she don't she doesn't have it. Exactly. Spectre. Yeah, exactly. I think the biggest thing about Spectre right now is that she boots the enemy carry out of lane because like whatever off lane combo will kill you with uh, oh, with yeah. an extra Spectre. Like you saw the Void at that game. Like you oh, wouldn't yeah, die, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and the thing about Life Stealer is oh, he's so like an need, ungankable carry. You need yeah. safe heroes all around against Spectre. Yeah, I think so. I think that's... I mean, I played it earlier today as well, because I was like, I see a Spectre, I want to play Life Stealer, and then... Oh, yeah. yeah it, Interesting. It, it, I learned a lot from that. So, my theory here is that Spirit has a big reveal for their carry, because why give free info on your mid for enemy mid to counter? Why delay your carry just to counter enemy mid, which is what Virtus Pro is still lacking. Normally, Carrie's not thinking, I want to counter your mid. And Here it comes, the man. The surprise life stealer pick. Because <laughs> I know what you're saying. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of committed. I don't know. I'm you're trying committed. to think of like what else. It's what you believe in, yeah. Yeah. But entertaining alternatives. Uh, TP, Naga, Ursa. <laughs> uh, Naga would actually be really good here, too. Naga... I mean, I guess Naga's not as good against Spectre as she used to be because you used to cancel out the haunt. Like, she would haunt and then you'd push what? Song and it would can Oh. I'm saying, uh, yeah, because like Spectre used to be like a long cooldown. Oh, big commitment right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but now it, I'm imagining that matchup's not as fair for Naga as it used to be. How's Anti Mage against Spec? That is traditionally a very good matchup. Uh, for Anti. For Anti Mage, yeah. Um, they could consider it. It's Yatoro. I could see it. Offlane Wraith King, Anti Mage, I can see it. Sven. Uh. Huh. Hmm. Deals with skeletons. It deals That's... with the skeletons, true. Um. Man, I just believed in Life Stealer so hard there, and they just Sven. Builds Silver Edge for three passives. Two of them relevant. 
one most yeah. relevant? I would say... Oops. Who do you want to watch this game? I mean, it's your choice this time around. Who, okay. Who are you thinking? Let me see. Let me see. Um... Uh... Not Tide Hunter. Hmm. It can be Yadaro and Sven. Uh, it can be. Honestly, I'm, I'm interested in Spectre, Kiritic, and I'm interested in Sayuf, Muerta, but she's support. And I, I know we're, we're mostly thinking maybe we'll watch uh, Kors. I think Muerta would be fun to watch. Uh, well, it's your choice. I'm like, we don't have to watch all three core games if you want to watch the support. I think Spectre or Morita are good options. Uh, we've twice watched a global he hero that joins fight. No, actually, not Faceless. Faceless and Dawn have both been outside of the fight a lot. That's and true. Uh, so we don't get to see as many fights, which honestly, it's fine for me. Uh, I'd say Spectre or Morita is a coin flip for me. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, at the end of the day, what makes this kind of thing fun for me is like it, you know, just go with what go with what you're vibing with. Are you wanting to watch some more fights? Are you wanting to watch like the support vision aspect of the game now, or um, are you trying to learn Spectre? Like, what are you, what are you feeling? You can also let chat decide. Uh, chat. What do you guys think, Spectre or Muerta? We're not. I'm not saying it's definitely a democracy, but at least can get some feedback. My chat is saying mainly Muerta. About 60 40 Muerta. I think my chat's 50 50. Or more spec. Okay, now my chat's Spectre. Now that I said they're Muerta, everyone's like, no, no, no! <laughs> That's how it is, isn't it? Yeah. Why did you leave No Tail's house? They kicked me out. I ate too much cake. Ugh. Yeah. Man, did they at least warn you ahead of time? Like, you know, if you eat too much cake, they'll get rid of you? Or? No, there was a hidden meter of cake eatage. I actually exceeded it on day five, but they had to keep me till day six because of the contract. Ah, uh, that's, I mean, at least you got some extra days in there. <laughs> I ate that's even more on the day six. They let me know that I was booted and uh, I was like, well. They said your days were numbered and you're like, okay, time to finish off all the cake. Left none for others. Very good. I would do the same. What did you decide? Uh... Well, I'm torn, but I would prefer personally to watch uh, Morita, but I would mind. I wouldn't mind Spectre either. Well, then let's go Morita. All right, let's do Morita. So let's we got team with the most kills. We only got 40 seconds for these. Okay. Uh, team, team with the most, most kills. kills. I'm going with VP. Me too. Will tower be denied? No. Total number of smoke and kills: 25. Three to five. Physical. Mm. Highest single burst of physical. And there's a Sven. Highest amount of physical damage a hero will do in one hit. Will Sven or Wraith King do over a thousand damage in one hit? Oh, that's a good question. I'm gonna say no. I'm um, yeah, I'm gonna go seven fifty to a thousand. Me too. Chat said good. yes easily. Okay, let's just follow with chat, but I think you're wrong, chat. Oh, yeah, oh, we, we got a new value, 49. It's in there. What? 49 what? 49 for the... It said prediction update for the most damage done by a hero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Updates. It was, was freaking Muerta right-clicking somebody. Uh, all right, guys. We're following Muerta. Uh, kind of semi... Uh, uh, my decision. If you wanted to watch Spectre, sorry. But uh, here we are. We're going to watch more fights at least. And we'll see how Muerta Wraith King plays against Sven and... Treant. Oh, that was that was nasty. That was actually a Treant Willow gank on Grimstroke in the lane. Uh, he was trying to get to his tower. They got the deny on the Sven stun. Like the Sven tried to stun the range creep, and they managed to dual deny it at the same time. <coughs> nice. Yeah, now that he's against two ra he's against two melee on uh, Muerta, so if he can get a lot of these pot shots in and keep his distance, it's super important that this like little buffer he has, this like 300 range buffer, you see how he's keeping it, it's like it's so important because if he ever walks up, leech seed, stun, 500 oh, yeah. damage or something. Yeah. So he wouldn't hit if Treant is within 300 range. Yeah, exactly. I, okay. It's like, I learned that playing Muerta carry, her animation's a bit awkward, right? So if you stick around for a second, you know, it lets yeah. you close. You're so counting you auto attacks here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, 
The fact that he forces Sven into tower there is really important because now the lane can be kept by Wraith King static back. And uh, the Sven was forced to take it into tower. So we saw Collapse last game trying to uh, do whatever he could by himself to keep the lane out. Um, but now since it's not like a kill lane, it's not like a CK lane, the support can help uh, with this type of stuff too. So. Lich seed, that means stun might be forthcoming, but Sven did not like it. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's what he was pool, going for. Pool table stuff. That was funny. Oops, lasted. He still it from Wraith King? Uh, it was like one of those where Wraith King was likely not going to make it, but he might have. Yeah. yeah. He took, yeah but, you know, whenever I, I have learned it, like, uh, tranquility when my support does that. Yes. And before I did not, and it's because I stuck to the dogma of what I had been taught, which is like uh, the farm ladder. I respected the farm ladder so much, and this is how coaches told me, this is how chat told me, <laughs> that I really thought if they break it, they're being debacks, and I wanted to like, I wanted to feel that anger. Now I've learned to mostly let go of it, and now I feel like it's humorous when uh, my core, when I'm support, does like the X ping like ding the ding the ding the ding <laughs> where he's like complaining because i as a four took one creep from him as a three because i thought he's not going to be able to make it whether it's true or not you know? yeah i mean it's really funny to hear like your evolution of because like you obviously got a lot of outside input compared to what most people get right since yeah. you're like newer to the game and you've been streaming it the whole time you were playing it. yeah I, uh it's really funny to hear your evolution. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think in general, the mantra of like the, the sum of the team at the end of the day is all we should really care about. Right. Uh, but like, I mean, if, if the guy's if, like <laughs> pump faking, contesting you for CS, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's different. one thing. Yeah. <laughs> but if he's like, you know, if a support makes an in moment judgment call to, to take the CS, it's like, yeah. it is what it is, you know? Yeah. Hey, why did the range creep uh, decide to attack even though he attacked the melee? Uh, are you talking about why did it go to the jungle camp? One melee and one range went into the jungle camp because Moretti was not able to put enough distance between the camp and the wave. Then he attacked the melee. The melee said like, okay, you attack me, I come for you then. Ignored the jungle camp, but the range creep felt differently. Why? Uh, so the... the... Okay, okay. Nice. Huh. Okay, so what I think happened was... Oh, I know exactly what happens. You look so back? So the creeps... I went back, yeah. yeah so the, yeah. the creeps will chase the jungle creeps until they... Where they last saw them. Uh, so they, they they chase to that to that area right next to the camp. So yeah. the, the melee creep does that. And once it goes to where it last saw them, it'll then check for aggro. And so at the moment the melee creep checked for aggro, Muerta was attacking. At yeah. the moment that the range creep checked for aggro, it was in range of the camp, but Muerta was not attacking. So it like saw the camp and attacked it. I don't know if that makes sense. It's because like, the range creep had vision, the melee did not, you mean? I'm saying that they, the creeps will chase as far as they last saw the creep. So the creeps in the jungle went behind a tree. So then the range creep and the melee both are coded to walk to where they last saw which yes. is that tree yes and then check for aggro so at the second the melee creep walked at the tree the muerta was attacking it so it was like oh i passed this tree attack muerta but when the range creep did the whole check muerta was not attacking and the jungle camp was closer so it oh. just you mean Does the timing of the attack? The exact timing, yeah, because I'm uh, telling you the creeps will walk past the tree because that's where they last saw the neutral. And then they will immediately check aggro. Like where the, from when they last saw the creep. So they'll pass the tree. So you're check saying aggro. they both lost vision? They both lost vision right but at the tree. But because the range so creep was l l walking behind the melee, it yes. got to the point of not having any vision anymore, not simultaneous with Muerta firing a shot. Exactly. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I actually had to look. I had to think about that one for a second, but I, I am a hundred percent sure that that that's how that works. So. Chat to understand? No, there's a lot in chat that don't understand. But maybe with the. I would my, have to show the replay, but maybe yeah. with my paraphrase. Yeah, maybe what you said helped. I don't know. It is a very wonky interaction, so it is hard to explain. That was a cool gank by Coddle, but they might be in too deep here. Yeah, Counter gank they... by Laurel. Yep. No okay, chat to understand. Good.
So, uh, Invoker... Wait, did Kotal walk and Invoker TP'd? Yes. Why did he TP? That is exactly... Uh, he TP'd because, uh... I mean, they were pretty <laughs> deep, I'd say. So he could TP, like, behind them. Reactively. Like, the, the, like the Muerta was a ranged hero in tower range. Yeah. So it's like, uh, opportunity to TP flank them. Oh, damn. Ghost walk, Laurel shows up. I imagine that a lot of these mid players also factor in that if they rotate around six and a half minutes, that they can then turn that into another rotation a at kill. the Wisdom Rune, like this. Oh, like okay. They, they want to, they want to stay here for an extra thirty seconds anyway. Oh. That's what I imagine they're thinking. Is that what so. he did? Yeah, that's what he did. He went top and then he went immediately to the Wisdom Rune after on Laurel. He never went back mid. Let's see. Oh yeah. I think actually dying in the off lane at uh, like minute between six and six forty five is like really bad. Oh, I've, I've so had you this can't, happen to me in my game. So you can't fight for the yeah, wisdom. You, yeah, you get you get out outnumbered at the wisdom. Ah. Yeah. yeah, I know Trian denied himself to the ancient, that's cool, right? Oh I didn't notice that. That is cool. Yeah. Tide Hunter, like you said, free farmed against uh Spectre, uh, actually insane levels of farm. He's gonna be like five and a half K. Meteor Hammer, take down the tower. Is he okay, meteoring? This is officially my pick, to be honest. I will pick it now. Cool. Because I've had a lot of first pick Spectres in my games, and I'm like, but I still it doesn't do okay, happen. but I don't free farm it like this. And it doesn't happen in pro games, so you couldn't use that. But for some reason, uh, Versus yeah. Pro did do it, so you get some info. <laughs> exactly. That's why I said, like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Take a hero that's happy with free farm against spec. Yeah. But like, I thought she's killable too. Like, when I play uh, a lot in Herald, uh, Spectre, uh, and Guardian, I was really struggling with Dawnbreaker, Snapfire. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. Or Legion, Skywrath. Like, I'm just dying. They're spamming spells and I die. I can see that. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know. That, that was also before the map was big, right? Yep, no small map. Yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. really cool for uh, mid laners to come contest Wisdom Rune. I see this in pro games. I do not see it in my games. Do does it happen in yours? Yeah, yeah. I was saying anytime <coughs> a gank. That's that's why I knew that he benefited from that gank because I've had it in my matches where um, I'll die as an off laner and I then I see that at six thirty and I see the mid like after he kills me running straight for my Wisdom and I'm like, oh shit. Oh uh -huh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I realize like it's an uber fuck up for me if I die as an offlaner between six and seven minutes. It feels really bad. So it's funny I actually, how far now back. That I think, oh, go ahead. Okay, sir, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say it. It realized that like it was actually a pretty big mistake in my opinion that VP made an aggressive move at six and a half minutes. Right. Uh, like that. So. Yeah, that's roughly what I was gonna say too. Also, it, it harkens all the way back to who gets the Lotus, who was pushing out the lane at six minutes. Are you then like doing some kind of engage at 6.30, which then leads into the Wisdom Rune and all the consequences that are paired up with that. It's really interesting how far back some of these decisions go. Yeah, it's, uh, I think the, like, the five day minute mark right now is just super active because uh, nighttime and then like the and then the twin gates become a thing at nighttime and then, uh, then the power rune, then the Wisdom Rune, then the power rune. So I, I feel like the five day minute mark is like really time to be on edge right now yeah uh, interesting uh, team liquid uh, tips video that i saw with nisha so that's obviously when uh is he still with team liquid i'm trying to think yeah he is with yeah, liquid, yeah, right? he's there, man. Yeah. yeah 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 so interesting uh team liquid nisha video um he said he didn't like the big map so much because as a mid laner it's two kilometers away for him to gank the frontier jungle like the edge oh, jungle. Oh yeah, yeah, it's forever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's I really know. big. It got harder to gank people, ha gank the enemy carry in particular. Uh, that's a funny observer ward location. Did you see that? I did not. But um, by Muerto? Uh, no, sorry, I had the wrong perspective. Uh, there's an observer ward by Dyer. Uh, inside. Dyer's middle tower. Uh, uh, switch to Dyer for a second. I look at the top outpost. Oh. It's the inside fuck? the rock. Yeah. But it has ah. vision outside the rock. That's weird. Anyway. Dota things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, he said he, he the big map, it's harder to gank the carry because he's so far away. So actually, as a myth, if the perspective of the myth is it's been harder to gank people because of the big map, 
then surely the wisdom rune is an amazing melting pot of uh, uh, like a great assembly point a meeting point to get some kills if you're a strong mid yeah i mean i think right now the only way to i was talking about this uh in terms of showing on creep waves that like um objectives and creep waves are so important right now because in the past if you didn't see anybody you kind of have a decent idea of where they are but now it's like they could just be in so many different places right that uh you can't really hunt them randomly yeah so, oh. um the objectives on the map and the creep waves when you show on them it's like so much information it's like the only way people can kill you so. oh. Oh, the blinding light prevented the tree ulti from landing. Yeah. <laughs> I heard the Grimstroke laugh. <laughs> yeah, it was a, this, it was a uh, cool Tyler is obnoxious for them. Uh, he's just walking a tower to the Meteor Hammer. Yep. Um, he took the tier 1 tower bottom. Now he's, like, you see Moretta trying to soak some XP and just kind of delay the push a little bit. But Yeah. Oh, they're actually flanking in with Laurel and he's caught a little bit. Nice place for the W there. Oh. Okay. Are they gonna uh, get more? I think. God. They still get their pound of flesh through the tower, but that's a great. Uh, they just ignored the tight. They even were outside of ravage range, and they had vision of uh, invoker because of the sentry and the ops on the high ground of the triangle. So they planned their gank with spectre. That was nice. That's yeah, like such a interesting ward to have placed too. The yeah. Usually, if you're like playing around mid like this, you'll have a ward. A little bit further up maybe in front of the tower but i'm imagining they think like they can't do anything to the tide so if there's a ward there they'll just get it dewarded yes so oh. the ward is super defensive the bane yeah. of my existence is when i play support or not play support my fellow support places ops wards in all the easy to clear areas all the logical places without any power to defend it yeah 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 i think uh, that's something that's really important for supports is to think about not only what vision you want but how far can you defend it it's like that same idea that um vp or not vp uh team spirit last game like they only could defend the ward if it was like on the very edge of that of the of the walk up you know like yep. they couldn't they wouldn't be able to even get there if they placed it further up so yep he's going for the wisdom his team <coughs> smokes and he's like see you nerds wisdom time Respect what do you, it. what do you think about uh Muerta's decision as a four generally I try to build arcane boots a magic wand same as him then I often go crest to enable uh, a carry but Spectre is not a great crest target neither is Wraith King I suppose I mean they're okay but I, I could go crest if I don't go crest I go four staff but he went Wraith band but okay I have seen um I've seen a lot of like warlocks do this that's what? The I've seen do this. Yeah, like Wraith I know bat? the yeah. Look at the fishman for entity. I've seen him be warlock with four wraith bands. I'm yeah. not even fucking kidding. Yeah, you know, is fishman uh, a good one to follow as an example? Uh, I'll be honest. Probably. I mean, like, I don't. <laughs> I don't actually have a problem with him. I just know I've heard other people like say he's kind of toxic or whatever. I know but... Gork has a problem with him, but uh, yeah, <laughs> he's got I, a problem I mean, with a lot of people. Trying to look at like how's the team doing, kind of thing. Uh, and at the end of the day, he is a very high MMR player, and he's a captain at TI, so... Okay. I, I try for to ignore person for entity. Oh, yeah. So you ignore, yeah, person. Yeah. I, I try to, like, I, I if I don't respect a player as a person, I'll still, like, look at their builds if I think they're a good player. That's wise. Um, if you don't do it, you'll be blinded to their mistakes and successes. If, if you indeed. let yourself be blinded by hate or indeed. disfavor. Yes. Precisely. I mean, I, all I'm saying is that the Wraith Band, I think, is specifically nice against heroes like Sven. He's going to get jumped. And the, I think the nice thing about Warlock and Muerta specifically of why it's good is you're not exactly awesome. planning to live, but you need to just push R. Like, you need to live long enough to push R. From so, Muerta? Uh, yeah, Muerta and uh, yeah. on on Warlock. Obviously, for different reasons. Oh, Warlock, Muerta, yeah, yeah, yeah. On Muerta, very different. Like, you're doing it to survive. On Warlock, you're doing it to turn the fight, but... So let's see if, thanks to it, he can survive against Sven. Obviously, Wraith Band is 505 gold, and Crest is like, I don't know, 2500 or something? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Wraith Band also, like, you have to consider it as like a 1000 gold item at 25 minutes. That costs yep. 500. Yeah. So. Well, not necessarily. When you buy it for 505, you have the implicit understanding it's going to level up. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So maybe you should consider it to be a 700 gold or 800 gold item at, at minute, minute 25. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's true, 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 true. It's the most value armor item at the end of the day yes. at 25 minutes. For cast, not for slot, yeah. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. 
Oh, he's TPing. Is he going to catch? No. Okay. Trying to dodge the old TP. Now. He can kill. He can kill. Oh. oh. I think he could have with that blinding light. I don't think otherwise it would have reached. And I think oh, he knew that. Oh, yeah. But the blinding light attempted to move it closer. That could have worked. That was close. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool when people like the Coddle do that because he's doing it for the, for the parting shop or for the dead shot. For the shop, dead shot, but... yeah. So Aetherlands, uh, before Atos, and then it, there we go, Wraith Band. Ah, it was not enough. <laughs> he, he almost had it, that one plus, but he didn't have ult even, so he would have died anyway. Oh, okay, yeah. All worth, he, he uh, yeah. traded himself for the Sven. Wow. No BKB? No. I actually analyzed the Tundra versus Nouns game, and I said the exact same thing, that Sven going for a kill before BKB, like, through the game. I actually think it's such a big deal that right now, if you go for kills and you are not unkillable yourself, like you don't have a BKB or like a heart or something, you just like, you just die. <laughs> I that feel was, like every time. That was actually so horrible. That was so, yeah. so, so horrible. He's level 15 against yeah. an entire Number lineup and allies. Everyone is level 12 and below. Hey, it's he could really have been, bad. He could have been four levels ahead and now instead he's going to be like three levels ahead of someone else. They could have been five. There. He could have been five levels ahead. Now it's three. That that like cost him so much. I think Laurel's dead. Yeah, he's fucking dead. I actually think that this spin play lost him. Like, if they lose the game, I'm calling yeah. this spin play here. Yeah. Like, this is so bad. So far, it was the most pivotal pivotal play of everything. Yeah, that's uh. I'll we'll have to link Yacht for my YouTube channel. <laughs> that was a Cliff Observer ward. He saw Muerta. And uh, he just went for it. Murta had her team behind her. Yeah, the thing about what I said earlier, where it's really hard to gank people because you don't know where they are, it's also like, even if you see the one guy that you can gank, you have no idea where anybody else is, you know? Like, yeah. they could be three behind them. They could be three jungling, right? Uh, like, in random places. Oh, is he going to live from that? Oh, oh. <laughs> that Dude, he got feared. I don't know if you saw it, yeah. but in base, he was feared. So... Yeah. So there was like That's a, a was that like a frame perfect fear during the final animation of TP? Yeah, That's insane. It's, it's insane it has how to that's be even frame possible. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that didn't used to be possible like five, ten years ago. I, like I feel like at some back point, Dota, yeah, back in my, uh, I feel like at some point that became possible. I don't know when, but. Two radiance on VP. Why? They're taking a page out of the Nine Dyer's Pandas book. Is under They're taking a page out of the Nine Wait, book. double radiance, really? Yeah, Nine Pandas crushed uh, Bedroom oh, yeah. with us. Yep. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. <coughs> He's got the radiance queued up on Spectre, yeah. 90% of the game right now is uh, farming, so... Radiance, Radiance, Radiance. What can you do? I feel like what matters right now is how your hero plays the map and what items allow you to farm fast enough but also be enough of a threat on the map itself. And if two heroes in your draft also both buy Radiance, it doesn't matter. Like, you just buy Radiance anyway. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter what the fight looks like. Just buy whatever your hero needs on the map. I think I think Wraith King, by the way, is, like, super broken. I, <laughs> I've been losing to it in my pub so, so good, much. Actually. Yeah, I'm like, there's just tanky fuck with a with a radiance and he's like not the carry like, <laughs> you know, like, well, it's the same idea as brewmaster i'm like what do you do against this i can't gank him and he oh, oh shit wow. it's Damn. Caught. wait does he have blink or was he just hiding uh, uh, with shard, hiding with shard. Uh, uh, yeah just shard uh, all right well muerta knew what he was doing he was Taking going the for this the for the risky farm yet yeah. oh call couriers no <laughs> Oh, he's so he's so disciplined. Yeah, I would have hit those. I lost a Archon Spectre game in a 60-minute game because I was I, I was smoked ninja geared and then I killed this killed a career and I died. <laughs> Feels great. I knew my where they were thing. and I was behind the enemy team five man on our triangle and my team was like hugging base and I was behind them cutting away smoked and I'm like hey a courier let's kill it and see what happens. <laughs> 
What are you doing here? Just getting to yeah. tilt them, isn't it? Nope. That was a birthday <laughs> present. Oh, hopefully you only had to make that mistake once. Yeah, only a couple of hundred times, but I, I'm get, I'm getting it out of my system. Oh, well, they're going on Spectre, but he managed to shadow step his way out of it. Oh, uh, that was not that was not the spell cast we were looking for. Oh, the the knockback into silence. Oh my God, he's on top Wait, there. He yeah, he's on the cliff. Wait, did did Kotal just speak of it? Or am I blind? No, he does not speak of it. I don't know. What's no, happening from the, where it's a perspective? This is a BSJ approved uh, uh, Sven engage because he does have BKB. Oh, nice. And he's out. Okay. So, two for two trade. They actually killed Wraith King through his ulti, like they killed him and his ulti. Nice. Sven is level 18 and the next highest is 15, and he's four levels higher than Spectre despite that one moment. Oh, they're chasing. Wraith band, Pokemon. That took an extra hit at least. Yep. <laughs> What's Wraith King building? Uh, Wraith King is building uh, Blade Mail, Soul Ring, Treads, Radiance, and then AC. Wraith King actually died to a neutral, by the way. I didn't notice that. Yeah. Well, he uh, he walked in there when Sven was chasing him. Intentional. Oh, nice, nice. I, I just think it's crazy that like a neutral that hits for like 60 damage can kill you and they're gonna spend chasing you yeah i mean they did didn't manage to take him down guys okay it's just they didn't finish him off team with the most kills at game and Radiance prediction updated oh no spectral dagger damage talent for uh, specter is so much better than uh, desolate damage now that her haunt is a dagger yeah yeah it's, it's you're double dipping now. Uh, They've got two radii, radiance eye, radi radiance. Two radii. Radii. Oh, they're going on Laurel, who's pretty low already. He just dies. Muerta has no TP, so he's going to make the long walk. We are trying to watch the support to watch the fights, and now this game, he's <laughs> the one not in the fight. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? He's been farming a lot, actually, always. Uh, always this, the risky lane or the fire lane, like he's kind of playing like the dawn or whatever. I will say, I did not consider this about more to support with either lens that like your Q and W are very good at like dead lane farming. I didn't, I didn't yeah. really think about this. Yeah, yeah I've, I've built quite a lot of either lens. Uh, it's nice mana sustain after initially opening with arcane boots. W is just like obscenely short range as a support because you can't step up like you do like as a carry you're happy to stand in the middle of your own w as a support you skirt the edge of a fight you want to make sure that you hit the relevant people with w aetherlands feels godlike yeah you're effectively like doubling the range of that spell yeah so almost by buying the user, yeah. that makes sense and then atos atos now has insane range it's actually so big it's like it's the whole screen actually it's literally the whole screen I, that was a nice timing on the part, on the dead shot because he yeah. knew the crack was going to Is he not going to die on time? He is. She has a dead shot. She's going to get in. Oh, the yeah, the the Grimstroke bug oh. is so annoying for Tide actually. Yeah. You can't crack and show that shit. <coughs> is well, that that's already BKB. I feel like this is good for them on BP. You can keep fighting. Yeah, they just killed the tree without even going within a thousand range of him. <laughs> <laughs> what does Grim have? Ah, uh, yes, I have the Vizier, I see. That's so good for him. Does he have either ones too? No. No, okay, he just had... He's been very poor, unlucky but... on his trusty shovel. On... Grim. On Grim? Four heal solves. Oh, I see. I was like, how do you know that? He doesn't even have one. <laughs> but you see four cells. That's really funny. I, I would still have it in my pocket now, but it seems he doesn't want to get distracted with such miniche when he needs to be looking at the map. Wow, the blade mail from Spectre just killing the Willow full to zero because he ulted. Oh, yeah. Ul uh, ulted? Really? Yeah, I'm saying the, uh, the Willow is bedlamed. Oh, Bedlam. Then, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, and then he just killed himself. Yeah. Oh, you call Bedlam ult too? Yeah, I suppose it is. It's funny because I actually say that as ult and then I say terrorize specifically, but oh, yeah. there's no there's no logic to it. That's no. just kind of how I... 
I guess as a carry, I'm more concerned about the Bedlam than I am the Terrors. I do the opposite because of CD length, but yeah, they're yeah, both no, I mean, it, When I said it, I, when you made me explain <laughs> myself, I was like, yeah, it actually makes no sense that I do that. So. so now he upgraded to Treads, which uh, a little bit more armor and attack speed. I respect the supports with Treads. I mean, he's going Gleipnir, so I guess he's like um, actually planning to scale a little bit here. I've been doing like right four staff into hex something wild like that. I know it's a big jump, but it can be quite nice. He's a much more slowly built up. Wraith ban, Aetherlands, Atos, then Glybe, then hex, oh, yeah, and Treads. It probably has to do with the fact that he's also taking pretty dangerous farms, so he's died five times, and he's probably not expecting to get like time to farm twenty one hundred gold items like Ultimate Orb, for instance. Uh, yeah. So he's thinking. That if every component he buys is like a thousand or less, that's how he's gonna keep having impact with items. Yeah. But he's he's even got hex queued up after the after the Gleipnir. So. Yeah. I I think this is one of the f few patches that this type of supporting is fine. Um, like where you actually plan to buy items to scale. I mean, I see on your stream when you call people fake supports. It's just when I see like three smokes <laughs> and dash and. Uh, you know, no wards purchased. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. I mean, I don't mind the killing supports anymore. If I see like my my Skywrath doesn't have four staff, but he's got two null talismans and Atos and a, and a Kaya, like I don't think we're in for a terrible time. Like it could work, it may not work. Even enemy has a Slark. I need four staff, but he's got insane damage. I know it can still work, even if I could theory craft why it's bad, right? But the thing that really pisses off is four observer wards, eight sentry, and three smokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in inventory, of the shop. Yeah, I mean, even in my bracket today, I had to buy like three or four sentries in one of my games because I was just like, they clearly have wards around here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know where, so I have to buy like three of them. But uh, yeah. I'm gonna buy them. It was it was like 20 minutes into the game. I don't remember what role <coughs> I was playing. But... Honestly, more sane to just buy it, especially. If you're very sure but like in general like as an offlaner i've just started buying them as well like i've played enough support to know that there's wards and my supports aren't doing it i could either complain to someone that clearly doesn't have the instinct to do it then they're gonna buy it and place it somewhere dumb or i'll just put it myself the only time i like either complain or like tell my team to do things is when i'm a six slotted carry right and they have invis you know like i'm like I need you guys to detect them. I cannot <laughs> detect them. <laughs> you yeah. know? But uh, like I said earlier, it's all stemming from like what my hero needs. So maybe they think like since I'm a life stealer, I'm going to be in the middle of a fight. I could be detecting them, you know. But yeah. uh, but if I'm six slot, so I wonder if they'll ever buy that uh, or give us a seventh slot for uh, for dust. Detection. Yeah. I think they shouldn't. It's fun this way. I'm fine with it. I was just like they've added so many slots over the years the neutral the tp yeah i suppose that's your perspective backpack. for sure yeah i mean you used to have six inventory slots with no backpack no neutral no tp slot yeah that's crazy i like what uh Virtus pro did here they detected the smoke into their triangle nobody went there they saw the wards appearing their own wards disappearing they hugged the map all around the map 360 degrees around on the map then they showed briefly Wraith King Muerta in the lane, clearing it, went up in the jungle and just disappeared. And not a second too late. Yeah, they were like there was somebody hunting them right as he TP'd out there, so that's yeah. pretty They understood that kind of stuff uh... Sorry, go ahead. They, they understood after the failed triangle smoke, they're gonna like address a lane that's pushed. They pushed it, so they pressed the buttons like a puppet master and Spirit had to respond. Yeah, it's uh, what I've learned. The that, it's actually just an assumption because I kind of saw people doing it. And I wonder what it is, but um, this is my conclusion: is that they see you in the triangle, for instance, right? And they know I have eight seconds before they go from triangle to top lane. So, you know, like I'm just throwing out a theor theoretical number, and they're like, okay, I have, a, I have this feel for what that number is, and I'm gonna show on the wave for exactly this amount of time, and then blink upwards. Yes. Know? Uh, and then they know that if they are coming and they TP out now, like it is not a coincidence how often pro players will TP out with like 0.3 seconds before they're caught. You know, <laughs> it's actually just exact understanding of how long it takes the opponent to, yeah. to move 
from where they last saw them. It's uh, That's really cool. something I've been working on recently because it's like, it's it, such a vibe. Like you have to be vibing so hard in yeah, the yeah, game yeah. to do it. It's a feeling. Uh, you're not counting one, two, yeah, yeah, three. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If you're asked a number, you may have an estimate, but it, most of all, it's a feeling. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said like the arbitrary number, and it is just yeah. like I. He's gonna be here about right now, and the the only way, like you said, is you make an educated guess, and then like it, you know, it either works or. I was thinking critically about what had happened, and even if I mess up, I'll get a bit more accurate next time, you know. Yeah. So. I think uh, VP is winning. They are playing they like a really. This a lot. They're what? I said they like what's happening a lot. Yeah. But yeah. They uh, avoided where Sven was like four levels above everyone else, the most farmed because of his acceleration with Cleave and the Ancients, whatever stacks they were. They avoided that moment. And honestly, for Spirit should have probably had more momentum. Maybe it's that Sven death. They would have liked to push some objective, either the Roshan or some towers. And now because they got slowed down when he was technically going to be at his strongest, Spectre can go into the late game. Yeah, the Yatro manages to actually get away there, surprisingly, but uh, I, I can't tell who's winning this fight, I'll be well, honest. Like, I uh, thought Yatro was just going to die. Should be Spirit, because uh, like Spectre has yeah. no mana, so they have to let Wraith King go. He does have the Ags. I mean, he's dead, obviously. <coughs> yeah. interesting to say that he does have an Ags. Yeah, I, uh, this is a situation that I found myself in against Spectre a lot, and I feel like I usually lose. Yep. But that was also the old Spectre, so I'm not sure. I feel like as long as v, uh, Team Spirit feels like they can farm the map, then Spectre isn't, uh, like, I feel like Spectre is very suppressive once she, once you can't farm the map. It's like, once oh, you can't farm yeah. the map, you're done. You know, you, I you know, can no I see longer what you mean. do that. Yeah. It is, they're not getting crazy ganked by a bunch of people which Spectre then joins. That's true, it's been an extremely passive game where Spectre is not constantly getting kills. So it doesn't become an oppressive hold by Radiance. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like as long as this is the case, Team Spirit's not too upset? Yeah, I think you're right, probably. That's also a vibe in the sense that I never know exactly what it takes for a team to no longer be able to move out on the map. You know, what is the exact threshold? But Yatro going back in, surprisingly, 3 FMG. Huge Satanic. Grimstroke is dead, but I, I don't know, is this... Man, Yatro is so strong, I feel like he's so courageous. What's happening to Spectre in the back? Oh, Spectre TB'd out. Yeah, he's healing. He got... He survived, maybe thanks to Manta, and then the fact that Muerta chose to get 4 staff. Uh, he actually switched away from Gleipnir into an initial 4 staff into Pike, And that 4 staff was crucial for Spectre to live. He had to leave the fight. Nice. I mean, at least... The thing about Sven is I'm shocked when nobody buys a 4 staff. Like, it is super annoying to play Sven into 4 staff. It's yeah. Super <coughs> it's a really late 4 staff. Problem. Yeah, I mean, I... I always say, like, in Dota, the odds of your item... Your item is going to most likely address a hero at the top of the net worth, like, somewhere up there. Like, the higher the net worth the hero is in the game, the more likely it is to dictate your items, so it's... Oh, like, it should dictate your item. Theoretically, yes. Like, not always, but, like, usually uh... the hero that's highest net worth will be the biggest problem causer. And, uh, so, like, if you're the highest net worth, you'll want to itemize for yourself rather than itemizing for team or whatever. Quick question um, uh, before you continue. Sorry, uh, yeah, the gem. It didn't seem like it covers the top of the cliff. Uh, I saw him use it, but I wasn't paying close attention okay, okay. to uh, the, the precise. All right. He did it like off the edge even. Like it didn't seem like the Venn diagram even had overlap of the cliff circle mm. and, uh, and the gem. But Yeah, he might have oh. missed it for all I know. Okay, so you're saying uh, that when, when you're thinking of an item, you should address the most dangerous guy, probably the top net worth. Yeah, usually it's top net worth, but not usually, always. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the late four staff is explained because now Sven's like a like a huge problem for their for their lineup. Yeah. Oh, the sheep. Oh, that's a pretty good peel by Muerta. Yeah, he's like zoning the rest of the uh, team spear with the W. Yeah, he got massively kited. That's crazy. He satanics the wave just so he can fight again. Uh, that was an extremely early Muerta ult, he must have thought that Sven was getting ready to blink and ult and stun yeah, or something. Yeah, he must have. Yeah, he must have. That was definitely like a panic ulti. Oh, they only got one with the arrows. 
Sven is back. Ten sword DTB, yeah. Oh, oh the Oh my the god. Dark, the cursed crown from Willow just stunned four of them. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen a four man curse crown. But Sven? Satanic turning? Dude, he's like he's just like, I'm just sitting here, I'm where to I am not I don't do anything other than cast some dead shots. Oh, Spectre, can he live? Kiritich, using the Spectral. Yeah, the four staff. All right, the anchor though. He's anchored, he's anchored. Yeah. This anchor is fucking broken. Wait, is he out? Oh. Ooh, no, he's dead. I don't think you can even TP or anything during the anchor, right? So. No. <coughs> it was some pretty cool that flanking. Been... The spirit support. Yeah, yeah, supports... he was not ready for that at all. Was it like uh, Willow? Was it just Willow on the flank? Wait, I'm going to check it It was just Willow, yeah. So they, and he, like you said, he was like worried about Sven. Like, I think he was caught so off guard by the Willow. Yes. He assumed something else was coming to fuck him up. You know? Yes. That was cool. Uh, they had a ward there too. Willow put an ops ward on the high ground cliff on the left. That mirror, like I love the way these like top tier support players play fights. Like it's so cool. To, like we're appreciating, you know, we're watching Muerta, but we're appreciating just how much that Willow approach like caught him off guard and like kind of disjointed the entire fight, pretty much. So. Yep. Or like fragmented. That's what's the word? Like he separated the. Yeah, divided. Or... Forced V, yeah, divided. He, for he forced the VP to like ditch their Spectre, basically, or like their Wraith King. Holy shit, Notice almost died there. I, mean, I think Muerta they, is one of the old... top ally killers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nightfall can attest to that one. You saw that game, right? Uh, <laughs> yes. That was the one death he had. It was like four times <laughs> into the game on Nightfall, and he just killed himself to the Tormentor and then lost instantly. <laughs> What skin gives Wraith King an axe looks metal? Is it the one with the throne or not? I don't know which axe this is. Let me... I don't know. Yeah, I've never seen that one. I know there was one Wraith King throne skin that you actually had to kill like 100 heroes for in some old battle pass reward. Oh, I have that. Yeah, yeah. you're saying the, the Arcana. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, the... Uh... The Wraith King Arcana. I'm really close. I have like 86 of the heroes. I need to get. Like oh, you can still earn it now. You just have to buy yeah, the Arcana back you, then. Yeah, you had to have had to You had to have the Arcana, but yeah, you, uh, you, you never run out of time to earn it. Yeah. Actively trying to earn it, it's probably gonna grief your games by MMR. Yeah, I mean, I, I just pick Wraith King whenever I think it's good, and if there happens to yeah. be a hero I haven't killed yet in the game, then <laughs> fantastic. I remember Blitz used to play mid Wraith King and he'd pick it um, and all you'd talk about at the start of the game was like what hero they had to kill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fight, fight, fight. Sven just got stun locked. Well, satanic. Clap still alive. Cheese on Invoker. He might be able to pass it off potentially. Aegis on Sven too. Yeah, he passed it off. Okay, so Sorry. Tide's gonna be able to re engage. Oh, they already killed Wraith King, or uh, old. It's funny that Wraith King Axe doesn't proc twice on his first death and then his second. True. That'd probably be OP, right? Yeah, it would be. Imagine for the five seconds he's respawning, he can hit you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Mean, that, that'd be broken as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> the win chance despite 50k net worth is described as 40% VP Gabe really loves Spectre yeah they always have Dota buff always or Dota plus always the most biased to Spectre <laughs> they haven't uh, disassembled either of these radiances ra radii no yet. not a fire yet yeah, let's see is it necessary we've got Yules Pressed the Sven armor, no shard, and uh, I don't think it removes Lotus, right? Not a fire. No. And then pi pipe barrier. 
You cannot dispel pipe either. Man. What? Really? Yeah, it's the only aura buff you can't dispel. Huh. It's only, what, like 8 seconds or something? It's 10 seconds now? 12 seconds! Okay. Can you use Muerta Axe on Wraith King Axe? I think yes. From Probably, what I've I learned, think the hero's effectively alive, right? From what I've learned from Wraith King Axe uh, Ghost, it entirely behaves like a normal hero. So I think you can Muerta Axe it. Because you can offload damage in it. Uh, you can take return damage from Blade Mail. Like, you can unload skills into it. There's so much kiting, but I think uh, eventually, like, VP is just getting ran down. Yep. He has no Wraith King ulti, so two people are dead now. They're just Axe Ghosts. He has buyback on Coddle. He's still on Invoker, so he's not actually low. I think the problem with VP's lineup right now is they don't really have... Like, they have Wraith King stun, but that's like one and a half seconds, you know? It's like not a, a long stun. There's not a window for them to go in. Yeah, they can they only counter attack. Argument. Exactly. Yeah. We're watching Muerta, like, she's just been sitting on the edge of the fight for like... Yeah. Every fight. So Chicken, he needs to start using his girthy health pool to share some damage taken. I mean, he's got value Wraith Band, come on. Yeah. If you're gonna get a Wraith Band, I think you should start the fight. Yeah, he should be frontlining for sure. And taking long fights against Invoker is so obnoxious. Okay, nice four stabs. You're further from the mic again. Oh, sorry, I was talking, yeah, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, I was talking away from it. Uh, yeah, the I was saying the long fights into Invoker EMP is like so obnoxious. Yeah. So they defend it now. Uh, pretty big net worth advantage. We saw Spirit quickly try to break out of the stranglehold of such a contain, and VP is not doing the same thing. Like we saw. They know that uh, Spirit is a bit split. Sven was mid, Invoker was bot. But they're just kind of inching out, doing one or two waves, some jungle camps. It's tough against Sven specifically because he represents like solo kill threat on pretty much everybody. Do you see Sven a bit as a global hero now because he has uh, Silver Edge? Yeah, I mean, he's an assassin for sure. Um, I think of him as like... Most, I mean, I literally, I remember I, I lost a pub like yesterday or two days ago because um, you just never know where Sven is and people never respected it. And we, yep. we were just losing one hero every minute and a half. You know? uh, so that's why VP is playing so scared, I think. I love how Mort is positioning here. <laughs> yeah, he's like literally not helping. His Spectre is getting a gaze <laughs> on and dying and he's like, not my problem. Because he knows it's lost. Dude, why, I, mean, I wouldn't was... have TP there. I would just walk bottom right, walk past the Lotus Pool, and then cut one or two waves. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's a tough call since they have, like, Triant and Sven and stuff. I mean, he has Jim, so he can see oh, yeah. them. But I, I think if they even catch a glimpse of him, he's just dead. Yeah. He has been playing incredibly safe this game, though. Yep. It's like, at what point... Do you wonder if it's too safe? But at the same time, I'm not saying I do think it's the case. Right? Yeah, he gets two shots, so... Yep. Coddle is dead. No bite back. Damn. Top top is under I I'll be honest. I thought Team Spirit was going to lose this game after Radiant's that mid-game. Like, yeah, me too. Even draw out. Where, but, man, Yathro... He... Despite having that one really bad play that got him killed, I just feel like he carries games that other people don't carry. Yeah. His fight execution is just insane. Yep. I mean, I'll also give props to Mira, though. That one fight, we really liked what he did. The Willow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, I feel like this Mort is non-existent. He did nothing this game. <laughs> Actually, if you watch this game... Typical chat comment would be, let's say if I played this, typical chat comment would be like, Muerta doesn't seem very useful. Or like, Muerta 4 is griefing. Why didn't you do more? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, this proves Muerta 4 is bad. And the thing is, in Dota, there's, there's such a high variance in what your actual impact can be in a game. And, uh, 
people tend to draw conclusions about heroes or your play if you didn't have pack. And like sometimes it doesn't feel like there's much you can do for whatever reason. You know? Yeah. I had a game where people accused my allied invoker of being a smurf. He had such a great game. The next game I played with him again and three teammates flamed him for being so bad. <laughs> People have to remember that your MMR is your average performance. You can be 5k and, ha and play like a 7k sometimes and play like a 3k other times, you know? Like also depends who you're against and what are you having. Who you're against, yeah, yeah. how they're playing. It up. matters how comfortable you are on the hero. I mean, even like random chances of like barely getting the kill as opposed to barely dying. Yep. Can make like a huge difference, so. Well, yeah, I, I, mean, uh, I chose the wrong hero to follow. Yeah, I don't know how interesting Spectre would have been either. I feel no. like uh, both of them... I mean, Spectre was in more fights. It's really funny. I mentioned it during the game already that we somehow chose the hero that felt like it was in the least amount of fights again. Uh, even though we chose the support. Yeah. I mean, this uh, could be a replay. If I was the carry or whatever, I would go over. What's my Morata actually doing? How come it felt like she wasn't doing anything? And you see how like how far back he is. Occasionally, he does a dead shot. Like, okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh... Uh, it's yeah, it's really funny when these type of games happen. But at the end of the day, I I think the spin pick surprised me. Like I didn't think it was, like the hero's been do it has not been doing very well at TI, and I thought he would get kited really hard this game, and it did feel like they managed to kite him decently. But I guess like for what you know, like eventually he just had a satanic, and yeah, they brought him down to like low HP, but then he would just reset the fight, and it felt like the gas and the VP tank, like they just didn't have sustained damage, like they, yeah. they couldn't possibly bring him down a second time, and maybe Yatoro saw that in the draft, like maybe that's, maybe that's what he saw, and that's why he liked the pick. But how did they count the Spectre? Like normally. In, in my average game, she jumps on people and they die. And there's like some allies to enable it. They find some enemies and then Spectre joins and makes it uneven. How come that didn't happen? I know I just saw it. But... Yeah, I mean, I, I did mention like Lifestealer, for instance, being an ungankable carry. They picked an ungankable offlaner. So I think that's like one way. They, they have, you have one core that willingly shows in lanes and it's like really to kill them. And then their other four <coughs> heroes are actually just never on map, if you think about it. Treant like, is hidden with Treant, shards. Invis, Willow, even just has like W to push. Sven's running around in a Silver Edge. Invoker's Ghost Walk. Uh. So in theory, like that was actually a really good question because we hadn't really talked about it and I hadn't really thought about it either. But in theory, like Spectre is a vision-based hero now. I think in the past, like what's so different about Spectre now is in the past, you didn't have to see them. Yes, She yes. was actually really good against these heroes that played off map because you were the only hero in the game that could find them but uh now you actually have to see them so i actually had a that's a big takeaway for me today uh, the fact that vp first picked specter or like second picked i think and then team spirit's entire approach was off map heroes that's yeah. all they did either invis or invins yeah that's a uh, very interesting theory like a whole lineup uh, now that I think about it, does deal with Spectre, even though there's no, like, individual hard counter. Of course we say that, right? But, like, let's say if, uh... Let's say if you have, like, Kunkka instead of Wraith King, someone that's more focused on making kills, rather than Wraith King, who's more focused on playing his own game. Uh, then it, instead of Muerta, you have a four... Well, let's see, Skyrath. Right now there's a vested interest in them going around smoke and finding people. Skyrath is gonna have a dust kind of removes the invis element that invoker tries to employ You've got dark willow who tries to use her uh, w to be invis this can be counted by torrent like the wtp is it w or e the w uh, w the dark realm shadow realm shadow realm yeah, is her yeah, w so yeah, she tries yeah. to shadow realm tp kunkka can torrent it now suddenly you've got a sky and a kunkka that are looking to get kills, that need to get kills to accelerate. Well, I've seen you play Kunkka, you get like 50% more uh, last hits than the uh, expected result from Dota Plus. So you farm plenty, and of course he can, but he can make kills. He can enable Spectre to get some kills to join. Maybe it would have looked, it could look different. The weird thing about Wraith King specifically here is that uh, what I've learned about Wraith King is like he eventually wears you down and he wants heroes that have to run away from him and he picked it into tide and i feel like 
Hyde loves those type of heroes. Like he, he takes zero damage from skeletons. Yeah, and like he doesn't, he is not going to be forced to run away from you because you're not like a a right click carry that's going to eventually like. This is a utility Wraith King, right? He's got like blink, radiance, ags. Um, you're not actually a threat to this tide. Like if this is an offlaner that doesn't build pipe and really stand in front, then Wraith King makes a lot of sense. But they saw the tide and then they picked it, so it's kind of interesting that. Maybe they took, took this strat from Nine Pandas. Like, maybe they thought, like, Double Radiance could work, and we saw Nine Pandas do it. We're going to try it ourselves. I'm yeah. not exactly sure. Yeah, it felt like um, they played defensive. They played for the late game, and it kind of worked. They played different parts on the map. Spectre comes in late with the ulti. Wraith King farms his own side, and then Koto can do kiting. The idea seems okay. They didn't have as much aggressive potential, and it doesn't matter too much, but now maybe... Spectre is partially good because she's a good late game carry. Like she can be a hard carry, she can get really dangerous. But maybe we're underestimating how much she needs the occasional pick off kill to yeah, be good. I, to scale. I will say that yeah, yeah. I was saying that earlier. Remember how I talked about Spearbreaker? I think the number one problem with Spearbreaker is not that he's going to get fat. It's that you are so scared of farming lanes that you your heroes don't scale because you're against Spearbreaker. And I feel like <coughs> Spectre is now Spearbreaker, like in terms of that. I, I think that, because yes. I've been thinking of this a lot the last few days and now what you just said is totally correct, I think, where it's like, if she isn't threatening you, she doesn't really farm that fast. And then like at the end of the day, Spectre, yeah, she uses farm insanely well, but if Sven has 10, 12K net worth more than you, yes, then so I'm actually thinking that maybe these off-map farmers like Sven might fare pretty decently against Spectre, because as long as I can get my items up, eventually yeah. have a Silver Edge, a Satanic, uh, but that's probably a good way to deal with it. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. So, so more, Spectre a lot, so. more Sven and amazing jungle flash farmers, fewer of what? Hmm. Let's see, carry list. Like, how's Slark? Slark wants some lanes? Yeah, I think any heroes that... I think if you show on lanes for more than a split second, I think it's really bad. So, yeah. like, I wouldn't want to be Slark. I wouldn't want to be Monkey King. I wouldn't want to be... Muerta doesn't feel great in the Spectre. Yeah, but yeah, her, yeah, Muerta's really bad against Spectre. Yeah, something like Luna probably not that great. Uh, well, Luna, isn't Luna like Sven? You can kind of use Manta, yeah, I guess. I guess, like, <laughs> the thing about Luna is you never kill the Spectre, specifically. Like, Sven yeah. eventually can kill the Spectre, I feel like, and he's same, a threat to Spectre. Same problem with Gyro. Gyro and Luna are the same. Yeah, it actually might be that not only does it have to be an off-map hero, but also an off-map hero that scares Spectre. Ah, uh, so a single yeah. target offline, offlane hero. Yeah, yeah, so or maybe, like... someone uh, that's ungankable in lane like Lifestealer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ungankable, quote-unquote. Yeah, I mean, uh, it has to be a good life stealer game on top of that. But like, yeah, I mean, I felt it earlier that like, if you can't get booted out of Lena's carry, it feels way better. So maybe they thought from the first game when they picked Void against Spectre, um, they thought the issue was that Yathro got booted out of lane. And then uh, he's a Void. So that kind of sucks. He needs the lane but for like, quite some time. Yeah, but as Sven, he doesn't care. So. Uh -huh. Fascinating. I mean, I I wonder how, like you said earlier, like how much of our analysis actually went through their heads, or like how much of it is right. But yeah, I imagine some of this had to have gone through their head. What about um, PA into Spectre? She likes PA, kind of okay, right? You have a bit of blur to protect, and then you've got the the shard blow up. Yeah, it's like one of those things where PA, I think, in Spectre can go both ways, but the brick. The break from PA is definitely really annoying for Spectre, but, um, you know, I think Spectre getting massive buffs and PA getting massive nerfs uh, might even just be enough to say, like, probably not. But yeah. I think in a vacuum, it's fine. But for PA, but with the eight other heroes in the game, I'd imagine it's kind of tough. Somebody's saying they think the tide is the key part of the Spectre. Yeah, we were saying, like, having one hero that can show on lanes and not be scared. Because uh, earlier today I played against Spectre and I was life stealer and he went first item Orchid because we had like me Pugna Weaver and like oh yeah and I was like wow this Orchid's kind of cool but like he's all inning this concept like he thinks he needs to be able to kill us and then 
I was like, well, I guess I have to go second item BKB on Life Stealer. And then the second I had a BKB, uh, I wasn't sure. I was like, this game feels really awkward, right? And then the second I had BKB, I was allowed to show on lanes, and then their lineup was just not scary anymore. It yeah. Was really interesting. So I think having that one guy that doesn't mind showing on lanes is really important. So you went Matumba Man opening, face boots, armlet, Dezo, BKB, third item BKB. Yeah, sorry, I I, meant, I I did say second, yeah, third item BKB. I remember I was like actually halfway through my Dezo and I was like, should I stop back for a BKB? Because I saw this orchid and I'm like, no, 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 I'll just farm off map. That was actually what I did. I just farmed off map for the entirety of that Dezo timing. I didn't kill anybody. Man. I, yeah, I personally really enjoyed uh, watching that series. I think it's really a blast for them to pass for me because, the, like I, I've mentioned numerous times, I only watched games like this on my stream in the past. Like back, like my first two or three years of streaming ever, this is how I watched games. Yeah. And I had never, I haven't done it since, and it's kind of almost a travesty now that I <laughs> experienced again. This was really fun. I enjoyed the the analytical side of watching a player perspective. Sometimes we get caught up with uh, what maybe so seems like the best entertaining way to follow something or the mainstream way to follow something, like for the for chat that uh, something that we personally really like to do for growth and learning. Uh, yeah, that we don't do it anymore. Maybe that's why you yeah. stopped. No, that's almost certainly why I stopped. You're almost almost certainly absolutely correct there. Do you want to do another, or are you gonna head off? Uh, I'm gonna head off. I, I've been streaming since uh, like 2:30, so it's late for you. I, I'm, I'm definitely, cool. I'm definitely, definitely energyed out. But I really enjoyed that, and I hope you have a good rest of the. You're gonna watch one more series, or what are you doing? I'm either gonna watch or I'm gonna play. I haven't decided yet. Nice. I really cool. enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for doing it. Yeah, man. Thank you. See you around. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.